Hey, it's Andy from SmartWP and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about WordPress SEO. And if you're new to SEO, that stands for search engine optimization. Basically, we're trying to figure out how to get your site to rank on Google, Yahoo, Bing, other search engines like that. And let's be honest, we're going to mainly be focusing on Google. So today I'll be showing you all the basics of WordPress SEO. That includes what plugins you'll need, what settings you need to know about. And plus, I'll even show you how to come up with the article ideas for your website in case you need a jump start in that regard. Now, let's not waste any more time and let's just dive right in. So you can see I'm on our demo site here. Uh, we're logged in. So let's go to the dashboard. And we're gonna add a new plugin. So we're gonna go to plugins, add new. Now there are a lot of SEO plugins. So if you already have one installed, you still should be able to follow along since a lot of the plugins have all the same options. But in this video, I'll be using Yoast SEO. And we're gonna type in Yoast SEO. And you can see the plugin right here with 5 million active installs. So we're gonna install now and we're gonna activate. So what all of these plugins do is let you edit your meta title and meta description. And these are extremely important because Google actually shows these two values. I'm going to give you a quick example. Let's take a look. Now you can see here, I typed in best camping gear. And if I scroll down, this is the meta title. So you can see the best camping gear to jumpstart your adventures. And then this is the meta description. Now these are really, really important because this is a huge ranking factor. So now let's just dive in and I'll show you how to use Yoast to set up your titles and descriptions. So you see we have the plugin activated. So now I'm gonna add a new post just as an example. I'll just type something here real quick. And you can see the Yoast panel down here at the bottom. Now, by default, it'll just use your post title and then a separator and then your site name. This is pretty basic for WordPress, but I really recommend removing your site name typically and putting something more detailed oriented. And you can see by default, there is also no meta description set. So for example, for this, you could write um, best camping gear. And what's cool about Yoast and a lot of the other plugins is it lets you insert variables. So you can even include the uh, current year. And of course you can insert things like the separator and the site name, and you can see it uh, fills it in there, but we're gonna keep those out of there. So that's just an example of a good SEO title. You're gonna wanna make sure that your title uh, meets the minimum requirement here. You can see it's uh, telling us that it's not long enough. So we'll add a little bit more detail. So this kind of is showing us how the search engine result will look. And of course you can do desktop and mobile. And you also want to fill out a meta, meta description. Now, this is probably not the best description ever, but I'm just showing you how it works. You can see how it uh, fills the bar up here. See, if you make your description too long, you'll have a little red warning sign here, and you want to make sure that you're in that green area. Now, these are the main indicators that I would definitely fill out um, and use. There's a lot of other options here that I think are not useful at all. The title and description is the main thing. And you're gonna wanna make sure that you pick a good permalink also, that is really important. This is not actually related to the SEO plugin, but it's related to WordPress. And uh, that's of course the permalink. So you can set up your permalink here. For example, you can just call it best camping gear. So those three factors are gonna be a huge thing when you're trying to rank on Google. The slug, the title, and description. And Yoast SEO helps you do that. Now I'm gonna go back to the dashboard and show you some other important options. Now if we go into settings, permalinks, uh, by default, uh, WordPress includes the uh, year typically in the URL. This is a really bad choice because it instantly dates your article. For example, if I update the camping article next year, it's still gonna say 2021. So I really recommend going into the settings permalinks and setting it to post name only. So that means it'll just use that slug we wrote, best dash camping dash gear. So we'll save that. So let me go back to our post. And you can see now our permalink is just uh, our site slash best dash camping dash gear. Now, the next step that you need to know about ranking your site in Google is making a site map and then submitting your site map to Google Search Console. Now, WordPress by default includes a site map automatically. So if you go to your URL and just go to slash sitemap.xml, you can see uh, right now Yoast is generating it, but if you're not using Yoast, typically you'll see the plugin that you're using generating it or WordPress's default sitemap. It really doesn't matter how you're generating your sitemap. All of these are really, really well done. So um, now that we know the URL of our sitemap, let's go over to Google Search Console. And this can be found in the link in the description or just going to Google and typing in Google Search Console and you'll see the result right here. So you're gonna to wanna to add your site to Google Search Console. So you can see I'm gonna do that here by hitting add property. If yours is empty, it might just pop up automatically. Um, they have two ways that you can verify your site. Now, the domain verification is a lot better, but you'll have to know how to actually update your DNS. And if you're not familiar with that, um, I really recommend sticking with the URL prefix. 
So I'm gonna fill out our URL here. This is the URL of my dev site here, so we'll hit continue. So Google by default will try to verify your property based on something like Google Analytics or uh, Google Domains, but right now we don't have any of those verifying. Typically they're gonna want you to upload your, an HTML file to verify your site, but you can also go down here and go to HTML tag, and we'll click that. And you can see we have a meta tag that we can add. So I'm gonna copy that whole meta tag here. And then I'm gonna go back to our site. So I'm gonna to go to SEO and then I'm gonna to go to general. Now this might be in a different menu on whatever plugin you're using, but you will need a plugin to verify your site using a meta tag. So you can see up top it says webmaster tools and you can see we have Google verification code and we can just paste it in right here, hit save settings. You can see it pulled out the tag there. And then if we go back to Google Search Console and hit verify, our site will be verified. So you can see our site is verified and we just added it. So after a couple of weeks, you'll get some cool data like how people are finding your site, what keywords, things like that. But the important thing we need to do right now is tell Google our sitemap. So we'll go to sitemaps. And remember we had our URL as sitemap.xml, which is typically what most sitemaps will be. And we'll hit submit. So you can see Google took our sitemap and succeeded. And you can see it sees all of our URLs and things like that. Now what the sitemap is actually doing is it's a list of all of the pages on your site and it's just telling Google, here are the pages. And so this is a great way to make sure that Google knows all about the pages on your site. And obviously Google has robots that are going on your site as well that are checking out all the links. But this is a great way to give it just like, here's the master list of all the pages, check them out and make sure they're added to the uh, search index. So we have a couple pages on our site and you'll see we have category sitemap, um, author sitemap. Uh, now let me show you another important option that I recommend changing in your SEO plugin. We'll go back to our dev site and I'm gonna go to SEO, search appearance, and I'm gonna go to taxonomies. And you can see uh, here we have show search categories in search results. So I'm gonna turn that off. And you can see we have uh, post tags. I'm gonna turn that off as well. Typically I recommend turning all of these off. Uh, the format based archives, turning that off as well. And I'm gonna save that. And then I'm gonna go to archives, turn off the um, indexing of uh, author archives. I'll explain why I'm doing this in a minute. And we'll go down um, the date archives. Those are off by default and we'll save again. So now if we go back to our homepage and you can see our camping post here has uncategorized as the category, which uh, you can see this is a typical WordPress structure here, slash category slash uncategorized. And if I do a view page source, you can actually see that Yoast is setting it to no index. Now the reason you wanna do that is because you, typically your tag pages and your category pages, you don't really want those to be indexed because they're not useful information. You pretty much wanna give Google all of the uh, single posts, pages and things like that. You don't really want people Googling your site and finding weird uh, useless pages like author pages and things like that. Now Google will still go on this page and find links and things like that. Now if you're trying to think of ideas for your site, for example, article ideas and things like that, I'm gonna show you a free tool to use and we can figure out what to write about on our site. So let's just pretend that we still have a camping site uh, and we're gonna to go to a service called Answer the Public. And I'll include a link to this in the description. So you can type in pretty much any topic. So whatever your website's about, if you're a lawyer, you can type in law. If you're a photographer, you can type in travel photography. Uh, but for right now, we're gonna try type in camping. So if you scroll down, you can actually see it makes this weird cloud here of questions. Uh, we're just gonna go to the data part. So I'm gonna click data. So what this site does is it figures out popular queries that people look up based on specific keywords. For example, how camping toilets work, that would be a useful one. What camping gear do I need? That would be a good idea for an article. When camp, <laughs> okay, may that would be a good one, I'll be honest. I'm not gonna say it though. It seems to be a common uh, thread here. But yeah, overall, like that's an article idea that I never would have thought of and this tool definitely helps you bring it out. And of course you can be more specific if you want to. You can type in camping gear instead of camping and you can see people look up what is the best camping gear, what camping gear do I need, what camping gear is made in the US. That would be an example of an article you could write. Um, a lot of Pokemon based questions, but overall a great tool to figure out ideas for your site. And of course you can just go into more and more detail. And the best thing is this tool is free. And of course you can also use Google. So we're just gonna go to Google real quick and I'm just gonna type in camping gear and I'm gonna search that. And I'm gonna scroll down. They have all these uh, people also ask. This is definitely a useful tool that you can figure out article ideas. You know, what camping gear is popular? What camping gear is essential? 
top 10 things you need for camping. These are all things that people are looking up and Google knows people are looking up. So it's presenting you with that. So any niche that you're in, definitely Google it and look up the people may ask area and you'll find plenty of ideas for article ideas. And of course, in this little area, if you click more of them, more show up. So, so it's just basically an endless list of uh, ideas for articles. And the best thing about it is that you know people are looking it up because Google has already figured that out for you. And that's it. That's my best tips for WordPress SEO. We've covered meta title and meta description and plus the permalink. We've covered what settings that I recommend changing, which is basically getting rid of all of the useless pages from Google. We submitted our sitemap to Google Search Console and we came up with article ideas. So I hope this video was helpful. Remember to like and subscribe and check out smartwp.com for more WordPress tips and tutorials. Thanks for watching. See ya.